Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Legends on the Nintendo GameCube. Now, this is a, a fun little RPG. To be, I mean, to be honest, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, if you have been watching my videos for a while, I'm sure you remember at least a couple examples where I've kind of referenced this game um, in passing. I mean, I can remember one as far back as Twilight Princess, which, you know, I did a couple years ago. So this is one that's just kind of been with me for a while. Um, it's it's always just been one that I really liked, and um, I was planning to do something else before this, but, um, you know, this was always on the list for things I wanted to do at some point. So um, I figured, well, I feel like playing it right now, so, well, let's do it right now, and here we are. So uh, Skies of Arcadia Legends is a port. It's basically an improved port of a uh, Dreamcast game. I've never played the original, so I, I can't really compare between the two. Uh, but from what I've heard, anyway, they made a number of improvements in order to sort of make it a better experience. Um, the biggest one I can think of off the top of my head is that they have um, changed around the random encounter rate. Like the original one, you could have a battle every couple of steps, you know? So they sort of decrease the encounter rate and increase the experience you get to. It's still balanced, you know, but... Um, they they kind of make it a better experience that way. And they've also, I think they added a few discoveries. If you don't know what that is, we'll get into that once we start playing. Um, and there were a couple things that were content for the Dreamcast that I believe you had to actually download uh, from online. And they are just included with the disc in this game. So uh, basically they took the game, made a few tweaks to try to make it more fun. And well, you get what you see here. Uh, like I said, I've never played the original, so I can't really make a comparison. But I'm sure some of you have. Um, and if you've played both of them, I guess you know more about what I'm talking about than I do, but... Alright, so, um, I suppose we should go ahead and get this thing started. We've actually seen the little intro scene. That's what I've used for the, uh, uh, introduction to this LP, so... Here we are, Skies of Arcadia Legends. No options, no nothing. Let's just start up a new game. And first off, we're going to, uh have just one option. I kind of like this little background, actually. It's a strange... It, it, I don't know, the, the gradient doesn't work too well. You can kind of see, like, the diagonal lines, but that's alright. Um, I usually like to disable the rumble. I don't really think it adds that much, and it's just kind of annoying, so I'll just turn it off. And as it says here, um, it can be toggled on the options menu, so there you go. <laughs> we finally found her. Admiral Alfonso, her ship's in range of our cannons. Excellent. Prepare to fire concussion shells on my command, but avoid hitting her ship directly. We need her alive so we can question her. Fire! Your Excellency, the girl has been knocked unconscious, but she's unharmed. She's been taken aboard our ship. <laughs> the Empress will be very pleased with me. I'm sure to be rewarded. Rather handsomely, I might add. What? Where did that come from? It sounded like an explosion. Status report, now! The, the lower hole has been hit. Someone's attacking us. Attacking us? Who would dare attack a vessel of the Imperial Amada? There's a small ship hiding in the clouds off port side. Uh, that flag. Air pirates.
Air pirates, scum! Don't you know that we're Valu and Imperial soldiers? Of course I know. That's why we attacked your ship. You guys have the best stuff. I'm Vice of the Blue Rogues, and in a few minutes, I'll be relieving you of your, all your valuables. <laughs> Attacking us all by yourself? You're either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. We'll be tossing you overboard. Wait for me! Vice, you left without me. I'm not gonna let you have all the fun. Oh, hi. I'm Aka. I'm a blue rogue like Vice, and we're robbing you. You dare mock the Valuan Empire with your insolence? Kill them and toss their corpses over the side. Alright, so here we go. We are plunged right into the action straight from the start, and we get to take a look at our battle system. Awesome. They don't really give you too much of a tutorial. They pretty much just put you right into it. Um, but there's not really a whole lot you can actually do right now besides attack or defend, basically. Um, but we can run through our commands real quick. Run, self-explanatory, item, self-explanatory. We don't really have much. Um, pretty much all we can do here is just change our equipment at the time being. Um, we can guard, which will basically have damage from all sources, which is really useful, actually. It's a very good guard in this game. Attack, special moves, which we don't actually, we do know one, um, but you can kind of see, I don't know, it sort of blends in with the railing back there, but this requires seven of our, um, I think those are spirit points. Like you can see up top, we have two of eight. Um, basically, as you go through battles, you can, um, you gain spirit points automatically if you don't use skills. Um, we, we also have magic, which uh, will use skill points as well, and also MP, which you can see we have three of. Uh, magic in this game, basically, every spell uses one MP, but it also uses spirit points up top. And, of course, you can focus, which, uh, if you do that, it will raise your spirit points by a little bit. Um, at this point, I think it actually only raises it, like, one, so it's pretty much a waste to do it. Um, but these battles are pretty simple. Um, there are other things, of course, that we're going to be taking care of. Uh, but I think for now, we'll just kind of stick with the basics. Let's just go ahead and attack. We've got our enemy list here. Soldier, soldier, go. So you can kind of see, um, it is, you know, turn-based sort of thing. I mean, obviously, we put in our commands, and then we do them, and the turn just plays out. Then we put our commands in over again. Uh, but what's kind of cool about this game is the battle sort of goes on while you're taking your turn. You know, like, the, the enemies and the, the allies will run around and, you know, try to attack each other and dodge their attacks and stuff like that, which makes it really cool. Um, it, it's still, you know, turn-based at its heart. Um, you know, it's still the same type of thing. But um, it, it makes it a little more active, I think, especially if you have, like, a lot of enemies on screen. You'll see a lot of things, like, moving around. And uh, it makes it pretty cool. It's, it sort of uh, keeps it from being too boring, I guess. All right, so now after the battle, of course, we get experience and magic experience. Experience is exactly what you think it is. Magic experience is a little bit different. Um, oh, I think we'll just get into that a little bit later since it's not very important right now. Um, or we might just explain it with the next battle when we have a little more time. There's no point in resisting. Throw down your weapons and hand over your ship. Imbeciles, what do the two of you think you can do against the five of us? Take them out. I think you miscounted. I only see four of you. Dad! We'll take care of these guys. Make your way to the bridge and shut down the engines. And when we're out here, remember, it's Captain, not Dad. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> hey, guys, shall we go introduce ourselves to the captain of the ship? I'm ready when you are. Alright, let's go find the bridge. Let's go! Alright, so down we drop, and we're inside of the ship. So yeah, you can kind of see a little bit of what's going on here. We've apparently attacked the uh, the Imperial Armada, and we're stealing all their stuff, and they just kidnapped some chick, and uh, we are, of course, in control of Vice and Aga, since I haven't talked about this yet, and um, we are underneath the orders of Vice's dad, Dine. So yeah, we'll learn more about what all is going on in this world as time goes on. And um, here is our first chest. We get a Sacri Crystal. This is the first of our items. Uh, basically, this item is named after one of the spells that you get. Um, Sacri is actually a green magic spell. Uh, there's, there's kind of a lot to explain, so you might just have to bear with me for a little bit. Um, nobody, I don't think, actually knows any spells right now, so I don't think I can really, you know, show too much about that. Uh, but the green magic is basically mostly healing, um, at least the first, like, four spells in that line are. Um, you can see Sacri Crystal restores 500 HP for one ally, so this is pretty much just your standard, you know, attack, or er, recovery item. So, there you go. And, of course, all of our, um, equipment we've got on. 
And I guess, well, here's the pause menu, so we can check it out. You can see um, we actually have our title over there, which is a little funny, Vice the Unimpressive. Um, that's another thing we'll get into in a little bit. Um, for right now, we'll just kind of ignore it. You know, we have our super moves and equipment we don't know anything of, so there you go. All right, so let's make our way through uh, the ship here. Need to find a way to, uh, I don't know, find the captain of the ship, I believe, is what we're trying to do here. So let's just run straight ahead. Well, well. Air pirates have decided to infest my ship. I am Alfonso, cherished son of Valua's most distinguished family and an admiral of the Imperial Armada. Normally, low lives such as yourselves would never have the opportunity to bask in such greatness. Consider yourselves fortunate. Yeah, right. Who's the girl? I never thought someone of your stature would stoop to kidnapping. Ha! <laughs> You're very observant for a rogue. However, I cannot waste my time dealing with you. I simply must get going. I think I'll have you exterminated like the pests you are. Dispose of them. Alright, more soldiers drop down and we can get into another battle. Now, I say we take this time to uh, maybe go a little bit more in-depth about um, one other thing that we can do. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because the, the red light's kind of flashing, but basically you can see that Vice's weapon sort of has a red color. And if we move over to Aga, you can see hers is green. Basically, this is, uh, you can kind of set, like, elemental affinities to your weapon. Um, I guess red would correspond with fire, as, and that kind of also responds to our magic, or you get a different colors of magic you can get. So, um, if we want, I think we can switch by pressing Y. Yeah, you can see we can switch our elements around. And basically, of course, different elements will do uh, varying degrees of damage to different, you know, types of uh, different elements. Um, at this point, you can kind of see what color they are because there's a little outline on the box over there in the top right. These guys are yellow. And uh, basically, there's nothing we have that's any good against yellow right now. We're actually only stuck with red and green, as you can see. We're going to be getting more as the game goes on. So right now, elements really aren't too big of a factor. But I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an introduction to it. Um, you know, just to uh, sort of get things going. One less thing we have to take care of later. Now, these guys are all just regular guards. There's four of them, which seems a little intimidating, but these guys have pretty much half the health of the guys we fought before, which means they're going to go down with basically one hit. As you can see. And enemies, of course, can guard as well, which will uh, decrease their damage uh, that they take, which can be a little bit annoying, but of course it does keep them from attacking, so it's kind of just a, you know, strategic trade-off they make, I guess. And you can kind of see here some of the enemies running around, like, in between turns. You can see Aka's backing off because she's more of a ranged fighter. So it's, it's kind of cool how they do that. I like it. And we haven't gotten a critical hit yet, which will... There it is. <laughs> The enemy got it, but that's a critical hit. Uh, basically, that'll it's pretty much what you expect. It does more damage. Uh, there's also sort of a special attack animation if one of the, uh, the allies does that it. Was easy. So, there you go. Alright, so um, I guess we could also hit on magic experience a bit since we sort of talked about it just a little bit. You can see we leveled up there and we get some increases to our stats, which are very nice. And um, magic experience, you can see Aka has gained a rank in green, and Sacri was learned. Remember, we got Sacri Crystals, and that was our first spell. We also got a Moonberry from that battle, actually. I just caught that as it went on. Um, basically, magic experience is gained based upon what color of weapon you're wielding in battle. Vice had red, Aka had green, so the entire party gets both red and green magic experience. And I think if you have, like, if two people were had green, for example, you would get um, extra green experience. I don't know exactly how that works off the top of my head, but um, Aika has now learned, you can see she's got a little magic tab here, and she's now learned Sakri, which will restore 500 HP, just like our item did, so that's definitely cool. We also picked up a moon berry, which is actually a very rare drop, an edible fruit fertilized by moonstones. Eating it will enable you to learn a technique. This is what we can use to actually learn new super moves with our um, characters. You can see um, to learn Aka's first move here. Uh, spins her boomerang, summoning a vortex of flames, and it requires four SP. We need one moonberry to learn it, so let's do it. And this move is actually very useful. Alpha Storm is very, very good at the start of the game. It's pretty powerful, and it actually has a range, like an area of effect. So um, it's very useful in the early going. And of course, uh, the more skills you learn, the more moonberries you need. You don't really get too many of them, but you can learn most of your skills by the end of the game. So. 
Alright, anyway, I think this looks like a pretty good place to stop. We have uh, made our way into Alfonso's ship and spent a bunch of time trying to explain game mechanics. Things will move on a little bit more once we can sort of, you know, get out of that initial um, tutorial type phase, I guess. But um, next time we're going to head on up the stairs and um, see if we can continue our way through the ship. So until then, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.